This is a 1858 Remington race gun. And this is the coolest single action 1858 Remington on the planet right now. And if you don't believe that, I'm going to ask you to hang in here and watch the video because by the time I'm done, you're going to believe it. So first of all, let's just do a little bit of shooting with it. I got it loaded six up. Oh, and one more thing. We're going to do triple shots at the end of this video, so don't leave early. I'm out of my private range. And I've only ran a few rounds through this up till now, just a few minutes before I turn on the video. So I'm still learning how to shoot it with live ammunition. But I'm going to put uh, six on that on the big plate there. Okay, so there's my, my first six shots on, on camera with live ammunition. I shot it with, uh, with blanks the other day. You've probably seen that on a short. I did, uh, some, uh, I did a couple of triple shots, one that I showed on video. But I'm going to explain what's going on with this gun now. I'm going to show uh, this camera. There's two things going on with this gun that's really cool. One is, okay, it started out as a, uh, as a Pieta 1858 Remington black powder cap and ball. And... I ordered a uh, Pieta, or not a Pieta, but a, uh, I think it's made by Pieta. It's a Taylor conversion from Taylor. I don't know if they make it or if Pieta makes it. I, I suspect that Pieta makes it, but th that's a conversion uh, cylinder with the individual firing pins for each chamber. Hope the, that camera can see that. And now it takes 45 Colt cartridges. So that's, that's the first thing going on with it. And uh, anybody can get those. The uh, the black powder cap and ball revolvers are not considered firearms at a federal level at the making of this video, but uh, some states do consider them firearms. So you have to check with your state as far as, you know, if you can have that or not, if you can get it through the mail, uh, the, the black powder revolver depends on your state. But anyway, the way this, the way this works is the... Uh, the conversion cylinder, I just load it six up. Now, I would I would leave a chamber empty if I was gonna carry this around, but I'm just loading it, I'll holster it, and, and fire it right away. I'm not gonna carry it around, so I'm not worried about keeping one empty. But you put your six in there like that, and then you take the uh, the back part of the conversion cylinder, there's a, there's a little hole, um, there's one hole, and that mates with the peg on one side, and the center, the center uh, bar there goes, drops in the center, and then that peg mates right there. And so you got your cylinder loaded with firing pins in place. And then uh, if you're not, I guess I should explain this too. In 1858, put it to half cock, pull the uh, cylinder pin forward, pull the loading bar down, the cylinder, cylinder pin forward. Then you put the cylinder in from the right side of the gun and you turn it just a little bit so that the, the hand gets swept out of the way. Then you close the cylinder pin and the, I forgot what they call this thing. It's for loading the cap and ball that that uh, loading arm. Okay, and let's shoot it some more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain everything else I did to this in, in a little, in a few minutes. So hang in there, because it's more than just a conversion. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna put six on the small plates now. So we're going from a 10 inch plate to an eight inch plate that's about a yard farther. And uh, in practice, this is actually pretty hard. This gun's shooting a little bit high, a little bit higher than the sights. So I'm not going to be shooting it real fast. You notice this gun is bucking in my hand. This is the same load that I, I do fast draw and fanning with. A lot of people think, oh, you downloaded that so bad it's not even lethal, but it is. I just know how to manage recoil, but with one hand, it's... One hand extended, and I'm I'm not focused on keeping the muzzle. I just want to break those shots. So anyway, six shots, six hits. Happy with that. We're gonna show the reloading procedure again. There, I'll show the whole thing now and explain it a little bit better with a conversion cylinder. Okay, step one: put it to half cock. Step two: drop the loading. Uh, the uh, what they, I forgot what they call this thing. The black powder bullet rammer thing. 
drop that out of the way, pull the cylinder pin and drop the cylinder out to the right side. I think it'll go both ways, but it goes real easy to the right. Then you pull the back of this off, give it a tap. And sometimes they fall clean, sometimes you gotta pluck them out. So the way that black powder works, and I'm still learning this, but this is this is a called a 44 caliber black powder, but it, it's it's 452 bore. So it's not 44 caliber like 4440 or 44 magnum, which I think is 429. It's it's 452. So when you get a conversion um, cylinder for this, it's going to shoot 45 Colt cartridges. This one's sticking a little bit, but it reloads pretty fast. I mean, you consider a single action army where you got to punch punch them out one at a time, and and this sometimes I can drop them all six at once. Okay, so let's um, shoot a little bit more now. Okay, so reload. Okay, so I, I put it back together like I was saying. I, I lined that that little hole on the side there, that little hole in the, that's in the top, with the, the peg on the cylinder. Drop it in like that. And then roll it into place. Take it off half cock, and we're ready to go again. All right, I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do the big 10 inch blade again, and then I'm gonna explain how I'm able to do triple shots with this after I do that. So here we go, six more on the 10 inch plate. It's always the last one that you miss. Okay, so now I wanna, I wanna explain um, a little bit about how I can do triple shots with this because so far you can, uh, you could buy this gun from Pieta, you could buy the, the uh, conversion cylinder from Taylor. There's some other people that make them too. I'm, by the way, this conversion cylinder I'm very happy with from Taylor. I mean, this thing just dropped right in. No uh, hand fitting at all. Okay, so you, you would have store-bought parts and, and you could uh, you can do that through Pieta and uh, Taylor. And you can also buy this in a Uberti. I know uh, I'm just, I, I like Pieta's way better than, than uh, Uberti, I just do. I could go into detail on it, but every time I've, I've taken a, a Uberti apart, the, uh, the, the, they just, they're not as well made as a Pieta in so many different ways. And that's that's true of the of the single action armies. I've had a part. I've had a uh, a 1859. Uh, I think it's called a Richards Mason conversion. I bought a while back. It was uh, Uberti made, and the the hammer cam's in the wrong place. I mean, it might have been uh, accurate to history. I don't know, but it just did not want to have a smooth action, no matter what I did to it. So, I like Pieta better than Uberti for this gun. But you could get it in either one, and you can get a a um, uh, conversion uh, cylinder for the Uberti's too. But they are unique to the maker, so you can't get a Pieta cylinder for a Uberti or vice versa. You want to match it to, you definitely want to match it to the, the, the manufacturer of the, uh, of the revolver. I'm having trouble getting this one out. There we go. Need to get a little Dell rod or something. Okay, so to explain why I can do triple shots with this, I can't, um, I can't show you what I did, but I can tell you what I did. It's, it's not allowed to on, on YouTube to, to show you how to do this, but I can tell you what I did. Okay, so what I did on this, I did improvements in the same manner that Bob, Bob Munden would do, and I don't know that he did any, any Remingtons, I don't think he did. Uh, but he did, he did Rugers, he did uh, Colts. You know the single action army versions but uh, what i did on this the first thing i did is is i extended those leads right here and um in my machine shop don't try that with a drill or anything you you need to be a machinist to have a machine shop to do that but i extended those leads because it the 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 uh cylinder comes without leads as the, these all do so i put a lead on it 
Uh, the notches I actually left stock. They were 44 thousandths from the factory, and that was deep enough to do what I want to do. Then I cut grooves in the bolt in the way that Bob Munden would do. And uh, there's, there's a couple of different grooves you put in there, and I advanced the timing on when the bolt, when the bolt returns up. So I, I advanced the drop up timing to lock it into place. That, that right there, I advanced that. From, from the factory, it's just dropping right on the edge of the notch, and I wanted it to drop a little bit sooner so that when I fan it, it has a chance to drop in there. Uh, other than that, I lightened the, uh, the handspring and the mainspring a little bit. And what's cool about the Remington 58 is there's a screw on the inside of the, the, the front strap there. I don't know if the camera can see that. But that, that screw is, makes the mainspring adjustable, which is really cool because I can, I can make it, I can give it more, more uh, tension or less. So when, I, when I'm gonna, I want that spring as light as possible, but I want it reliable. I don't want it to not light off, light off the rounds. If you make it too light, you start getting light strikes. So what's cool is normally you'd have to take the gun apart put a new spring in it or whatever, but this, I can adjust it out on the range, just a little screwdriver. So that's that's one feature that's really, really cool on this on, on the on the Remington 58. So let's, um, let's load it up again and do some fanning. That's something that you should only do with a race gun because if you fan a stock gun, it's gonna tear it up. If, if I fan this, it won't tear it up because of those improvements that I made to it. The way that works is the uh, the bolt the grooves in the bolt, the grooves on the top, allow the bolt to gradually drop in. With a stock gun, the, the, the notch has to rotate into place and then that bolt has to, has to drop into that notch. This, it, it has to be perfectly aligned. There's no gradual dropping in. And with the, the groove I put down the center of the, uh, the bolt, that's something I learned, the technique I learned from Bob Munden guns. It allows that bolt to gradually drop in there. So it gives the bolt the chance to drop in there. And um, anyway, I can fan this gun and it will not damage it. Gotta be sure to put this on. But don't, don't fan stock guns. If you do, very gently. If you fan them about as slow as you could thumb cock them, then you, you'd probably be okay. But you can't rapidly fan them. So let's try some fanning with this. Never fanned it with live ammo before. Now, another thing about this gun it makes it harder to fan and to triple shot than a single action army is the hammer spur is very short. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna grab my single action army, hold on a sec. That's, that's the length of that hammer compared to the, the Remington, it's much shorter. So it's harder to fan, it's particularly harder to triple shot the Remington because the hammer spur is so short. But uh, let's go ahead and fan it now. I'm gonna move my camera into position here. That worked pretty good. See if we can uh, pick up the pace just a little bit. I think I'm gonna, what I wanna do now is I'm going to lighten it, that, uh, I'm gonna adjust the mainspring just a little bit. That, that, again, that screw, I'm gonna show it to this camera phone. Screw's right there. And uh, it's really handy. Okay, so the hammer feels just a bit stiff for fanning. I'm gonna back that off just a little bit. Don't wanna make it too light. That's good. Just make it a little bit lighter for fanning. Now, one of the things before I started this project, I was concerned about these little firing pens because I, I didn't know. I thought they'd have springs behind them that, that, that push them backwards and they don't have springs. They just free float in there. So because of that, what I found is that I can run a lighter hammer on the 58 than I can on uh, single action armies. The single action armies have a firing pin in the hammer that is a little bit troublesome. It has to, they have to free float to pass through the, the frame on ignition. And if there's any junk, if there's any crud at all in the, in the firing pin itself or in that hole in the frame, they'll hang up if they're light, you know. That's why they always make those springs heavy from the factory. But uh, on this design, each chamber has its own firing pin. There's no spring that holds it 
I wish I had a pointer or something. Let me see. There's no spring. I'll try and show it to this camera. Well, see the lights on me here. Okay, so there's no spring that, that holds that. that. That freely free floats in there without a spring. So it doesn't, there's no spring power that you have to overcome. And so far it really free floats well. Now, when I was trying to do triple shots with this the other day, and I did my first short with the 50 at Remington with a, a triple shot, I was having a little bit of trouble. After about 20 shots, it gummed up. But I mean, on a single action army, it will too. After about 20 shots, started having trouble, I had to clean the gun, so. Uh, it, you know, it's got a limitation shooting black powder. Gotta put that on half cock. Black powder's dirty, but it's it's a heck of a lot of fun. It's well worth, it's well worth the extra cleaning. All right, so let's do this, uh, let's do this fanning again. See if I can get a better group on it this time. Six. But I ain't too bad. That's uh, five just off of this, to the to the left of center, and then then the sixth one. There you have it. Let's do it one more time. We'll reload and do that one more time. There we go. I think that would have killed him. Well, thank you for tuning in to my 58 Remington race gun video. Should we go ahead and triple shot this? I think we should. Hang on. I'm going to clean this up, get some black powder blanks, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've we've moved down to the, the far side of my range. The reason we did that is because I, I want light on me and the gun as I do the triple shot. And the reverb is perfect from this distance. I'm about... 70 yards from that that uh, hillside in a tree line and the, and the reverb which is a, it's like an echo but it comes really quick is perfect right here and we have to light a non-tobacco fake cigarette or otherwise it won't work it's just it's a little known fact that if you uh if you don't light at least a fake cigarette the triple shot won't work and if you fail to light it that's bad luck just so you know. And that runny nose is bad luck too. Okay. This might take a few tries, but we'll get it done. I guess I better load it first. Well, listen, I want to thank you for turning in, tuning in to my 58 Remington race gun video. And I will see you on the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe. Sharing is the most important thing you can do to help me. More than liking and subscribing even. When you share my videos, it gets seen all over. So share it, please, and I will see you on the next one.